Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I am going to explain how to draw a shear force and bending moment diagram of a beam having UDL and a point load. As you can see in a diagram, we have three point loads and one UDL on the entire length of our beam, which is 3 kN per meter. We have three steps to follow, reactions, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram. First of all, we will calculate reaction. As you can see, our beam is symmetrical, so calculating reactions are quite easy. Reactions equal to total load, which is 5 plus 5 plus 5, and again 5 plus 3 multiplied by 6. So 15 plus 18 is equal to 33 kilonewton. Okay, so it's gonna be R A plus R B is equal to 33 kilonewton. Okay, now at R A is equal to 33 divided by 2, which is 16.5 kilonewton. R B is also 16.5 kilonewton. Okay. Now we have to calculate shear force. We can draw our shear force diagram based on these number, but I like to calculate shear force as well because this is quite difficult beam. So I like to calculate shear force. Okay. So shear force. How to calculate shear force? In shear force diagram or in shear force calculation, the loads which are going upwards, as you can see, RB is going upward. The reactions are negative and the thing which is coming down is positive. Shear force at A is equal to minus 16.5 as our reactions are going upward, so it will be minus 16.5. Shear force at point C is going to be minus 16.5 plus 6 plus 5, so A to C we have 3 loads, 1 at RA, 1 UDL, 1 is point load, so it's going to be minus 5.5, shear force at point D, minus 16.5, plus 6, plus 5, plus 3, plus 5 again, so it will be 2.5 kilonewton, so everything is in kilonewton. Shear force at point E, minus 16.5, plus 5, plus 6, plus 3, plus 5, plus 3, again plus 5, okay, is going to be 10.5, so minus 16.5, plus 6, so 6, then plus 5, then again we have 5, then we have 3, because 3 multiplied by 1 is 3 meters, 3 kilonewton, sorry, then we have 5 again, then we have 6. Share force, add point. B. So I will just take 10.5 plus 6 minus 16.5. At the end, we will get 0. Okay. So this 10.5 come from actually from point E. So I didn't I didn't write all the numbers. I mean all the values. I just put this number 10.5 and added the other things. Okay. Now based on these numbers, we will draw our shear force diagram. In order to draw a shear force diagram, you guys have to pay attention because it is not easy to draw. Okay. Now, shear force at point A is 16.5. So, we will go upwards 16.5. Okay. Then, we have to come to point C. To get to point C, we have UDL and a point load. UDL is 6, so this is 16.5, 16 
So if we if we take off six out of sixteen point five, we will left with the ten point five. So I will say ten point five is here, and the line would be diagonal line. Once we get to point C, we have point load again acting downwards, which is gonna push our beam further down. How much is gonna push? Is gonna push ten kilo five kilo newton further down. So if we go down further down five kilo newton, so we are here at five point five. Okay, so ten point five minus this five kilo newton, you will get five point five kilo newton at point C. Once you are at point C, now we have to go to point D. Obviously, to get to point D, we have a UDL and then point load. The UDL is a three, three multiplied by one, so it'll be five point five minus three. It'll be two point five. So two point five is somewhere here. I will say. So this is two point five. Okay. Once you get to two point five, then again you have five kilonewton acting downwards, which is going to push our beam further down. So how much it is going to push? Obviously, it's going to push again five kilonewton. So the five kilonewton will be two point five here, and two point five will we will go further down. Okay. Once we get to point D, now we have to go to point E. To get to point E, we have to cross one UDL, which is three multiplied by one three kilonewton, and again we have five kilonewton. Okay. So how do we do that? So it'll be three kilonewton. If we Again, add this three kilonewton into two point five. We will have five point five, which is somewhere here. Okay, so it'll be five point five at point E. Again, at point E, once we get to point E, I mean where we have point load acting downward, which is five kilonewton. Again, we will go down five kilonewton, which will become. Ten point five kilo, ten point five kilonewton. Okay. Now we have UDL from point E to D, E to B. Sorry, which is six kilonewton. So if you add ten point three multiplied by two, if we add six kilonewton into ten point five, we will get sixteen point five kilonewton at here. As we know, at point B, we have reaction sixteen point five, which is going upward. So we will connect this point with point B. That's how you can draw our shear force diagram. Now we have to calculate bending moment diagram. In order to draw a bending moment diagram, we have to calculate bending moment. So bending moment at point A is going to be sixteen point five multiplied by zero is, is going to be zero. Bending moment at point C is going to be sixteen point five multiplied by two minus three multiplied by two multiplied by one minus five multiplied by zero. So it's going to be twenty-seven kilonewton. So how it is? It is. Sixteen point five multiplied by two. Then we have UDL, which is six kilonewton. UDL all always acts its middle span, so the distance to C is one. So three multiplied by two multiplied by one. One is a distance, two is a meter. I mean two meter from here, and three is a force. Now bending moment at point D. Sixteen point five multiplied by three minus three multiplied by two multiplied by two minus five multiplied by one minus three multiplied by one multiplied by zero point five minus five multiplied by zero. Okay. In order to get to point D from A to D, we have to check how many forces are acting downwards. We have UDL. We have one reaction. The other one is UDL, and the other one is point load. Then there is another UDL. Then there is another point load. So UDL always acts on its mid span, and the point load 
is at is always multiply with the whole distance for example 16.5 multiplied by 3 from a to d is 3 2 plus 1 then we have 3 kilonewton multiply by 2 multiply by 2 again because half distance from here and full distance from here then we have UD, uh, point load 5 multiplied by 1 then again we have udl 3 multiplied by 1 multiply by 0 0.5 from here to there is mid span which is 0 0.5 okay so you will get 31 kilonewton bending moment at point e so it's going to be 16.5 multiplied by 4 minus 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 2 minus 5 multiplied by 2 minus 5 multiplied by 1 then again minus 5 multiplied by 0 okay at this point what i did rather than calculating each time udl i have just combined udl from a to e and then multiply by its half distance so 16.5 multiplied by 4 from a to e is 4 meter and then i have 3 point load which i have calculated here 5 multiplied by 2 from c to e then another 5 1 from d to e 5 multiplied by 1 and the point which is already on at point e has no arm so i multiply by 0 but this case here this one 3 multiplied by 4 multiplied by 2 from here to there we have 2 meters it's altogether 4 meter obviously but always udl act, acts on its middle midpoint which is 2 meter the span 4 half of 4 is 2 meter because the whole length is 4 so that's why we multiply by 4 first we have to calculate force and then multiply by its distance the force is 3 multiplied by 4 then multiply by 2 okay the answer would be here 27 kilonewton bending moment at point b so 16 multiplied by 16.5 multiplied by 6 so from a to b is 6 meters then again minus 5 multiplied by 4 minus 5 multiplied by 3 minus 5 multiplied by 2 then minus 3 multiplied by 6 multiplied by 3 okay so from a to b is 16 multiplied by 6 then i calculated point loads from 1 to 3 point load 5 multiplied by 4 then this 5 multiplied by 3 then this 5 multiplied by 2 then at the end i calculated combine all udl then multiply by its half length to combine all udl is 3 multiplied by 6 now we have force multiply by its arm the whole arm is 3 meter because full distance is 6 meter half of 6 is 3 kilonewton sorry 3 meters that's how you can draw at the end you will get zero now we have zero at point start and at point end so it means our calculation is correct now based on this calculation we can draw our bending moment diagram how we draw that at point a is zero at point c is a 27 so 27 is somewhere here at point d is a 31 so 31 is even slightly above so this is 31 this is 27 and then at point e we have again 27 which is somewhere here equals to the previous point and at point b is zero now in order to draw a bending moment diagram we have to connect these points with parabolic line so how do we do that so it's very simple that's how you can draw your bending moment diagram okay that's it for today thank you for watching my video please don't forget to subscribe my channel I